Thank you, thank you. I'm having, I got here this morning and I have not stopped since, I, since we landed and we have our panel in, I don't know, five, 15 minutes or whatever and, <laughs> and then we go back to Toronto tomorrow and I start again, we're shooting Monday morning. It's about an hour and 10 minutes, you can take the time. Fabulous. Can I take a nap? Yep. Is that all right? <laughs> only after you've I'll, I'll talk in my sleep, it's all right. So I'll okay. probably get better in your sleep, tell yeah. us, what can you tell us about the new season and you can't spoil everything. Yeah. I care. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. You know, Eddie will, Eddie will tweet everything that he shouldn't be tweeting. And, I, and this year I just said, this year I just said, oh, just tweet it. Who cares? <laughs> you know, it's because it's, it's, we're done, right? Um, I will tell you that it's going to be a jam packed season. Uh, and I think we're going to make the fans incredibly happy. Uh, every character gets fun stuff to do. Every character, especially in the finale, learns something interesting and new about themselves, about another character. They, they all find some really cool resolutions in their lives, and yet we can still move on. Um, we're doing, I mean, the, we're going to, a, a Pete and Steve go to a Renaissance fair uh, chasing an artifact. Uh, they, uh, uh, Pete they Mike and Artie, oh, well, well, Pete wants to. Okay. Steve says, I'm already dressed as a federal agent. That's my outfit. Um, uh, it's, it's one of my, one of my favorite jokes because uh, Eddie says, I love to dress up. I thought your people like dressing up. Isn't Halloween like gay Christmas? And, and Steve says, no, I don't like to dress up. And by the way, I don't watch the Oscars either. And, and Pete just says, maybe I'm gay. <laughs> Yeah, I just love that reversal with the two of them. Um, they're in a renaissance fair. We get a lot of fun there. And uh, Pete and I can already fall into a telenovela in an episode. We get a lot of fun with that. Um, we, we have a big bad coming back. We meet Claudia's sister. And we have some cool... We find out why she's a dang, incredibly dangerous woman. We have some really cool resolution with that. Can we find out uh, more about Artie's history with that as well? Yes, we see flashbacks of how it happened when he, met, when he first met Claudia. Uh, and, uh, and how that all happened. And it's really it's so moving and touching. I mean, it was a beautiful scene between him and the little girl. Um, and then uh, and we get some resolution with Claudia and her sister. And uh, Alice has gotten so close to the actress who plays her sister. They're like best besties. And uh, it's really fun. And then the finale, we, you know, we, we had broken. Uh, the writing staff had sat and come up with ten stories. And before we knew, we only had six. And so when they said you had six... <laughs> I went to sci-fi and said, oh, how about if we do five with a big five penultimate episode and then six is a clip show? He said, what do you mean a clip show? I said, yeah, clips you've never seen. You know, uh, so we get to so we get to see the culmination of five amazing episodes all in one episode, but you've never seen something you've never seen before. I mean, really big stuff, stuff that could make an entire episode. Uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but, but every cool story you think we could do, we're doing. This is the finale um, we cannot the, miss. The finale you cannot miss, okay. and and everybody finds some cool resolution, and it's incredibly emotional, it's incredibly uh, moving, and and there's a there's a, there's a there's a nice resolution to the whole show, and you have the sense that it always goes on. And I think it's just, and everybody learns something cool about somebody else. It's a really fun, great, I'm so excited. I'm directing it at the end of the summer and I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's just going to be a, So we, we started a fight over there. Um, <laughs> Allison and uh, Aaron both want to take home the metronome. So what, what would you take home after that? Well, I have Magellan's Astrolabe at home. You do? Okay. Yeah, I stole Magellan's Astrolabe because that's the coolest one for me. <laughs> really, mostly because the prop was so cool. Uh -huh. I mean, they made this amazing, it's a heavy brass Astrolabe. Right. I mean, it's really cool. Um, and they do, they do amazing props. But I, I'm not as, I'm not, I know, I know that's the cool, that's the cool gap that everybody wants to have one of. To me, it's what they do. You know, like, it wasn't, I was just trying to remember the, the episode where they fell into a video game. I don't even remember what caused that. But, but the fact that they were in a video game was right, so cool. Yeah, yeah. Tending with the noir episode. I think it was just a manuscript, right? I thought it was a case or something. No, the, it was uh, Beatrix Potter's teapot. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but, okay, yeah. You know, yeah. who cares Beatrix Potter's teapot? They're in, a, they're in a video game. They're in a, they're in a world of noir. You know? They're in a telenovela. It doesn't really matter how they end up there. What's fun is the journey that they're there. I don't even try to remember what takes them to the Renaissance Fair. But the fact is, there's all this crazy stuff going on in the Renaissance Fair. We're going to have a great time with that, right? So, so to me, what's fun is is the world that the artifacts create and hurl them into. That, to me, is what's exciting and fun about the show. Is that we get to go to all these amazing places. Although I do think the snowball would be handy to have around. Yeah, 
well, when some of the, when your tea cools down, when your tea warms up, you can cool it down. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of artifacts to be fun to have if they work. Yes. You know, I, I prefer the Phoenix myself. Okay. You know the end. Um, I do. The end so final in a way that there could be no more. Or no. if they came to you and said, "We want a movie of the week," you could do it. Yes, we could do movies after this. It, as I say, the end has it, it will have a great satisfaction for everyone. And yet, not an absolute. It will, be, it, will be, it will feel very satisfying and very moving and sad, but also not absolute. But uh, is it something they muted, or is it just something you like to do with the suggestion? Is it something what? Is it something they may they muted that they might look at doing? I haven't, I haven't heard or... about a, a movie being out there. Well, you, you put sharks in it. <laughs> you know, I think I think at this point you put sharks in it. You know, I'm, I'm planning my next movie. My next movie is Shih Tsunami. It's a wall of Shih Tzus that. <laughs> that descend on on San Diego and there are people are getting bitten at the heels all over the place. Yeah. Oh, even better. Comic Con Shih Tsunami. I'm telling you, I'm 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 uh, trademarking that name right now. Shih Tsunami. And I'm doing that. I'm doing a lesbian hour long called Shilix. <laughs> so I always wondered, um, does the story dictate the artifacts, or do the artifacts dictate the story, or is it a? Hey, it's a. Hey. The story dictates the artifacts. Because to me, that's the hard part is the story, right? I mean, I can I can. I can, I've been saying Hitler's microphone for years and we can't find a story that makes it work. You know, the artifact doesn't... But you find a story about about a, about a, de, about a, about a radio disc jockey who's create, wreaking havoc in a city, then, oh, maybe that should be Hitler's microphone he's talking into, you know? So it's the story that drives you to the... To the I mean, I suppose sometimes an artifact you go, oh, it'd be cool if blank, but usually... Usually it's the story. It's what, what? Where do we want to throw them? What's the fun place for them to disappear into next? You know, and, and that's what that's what tends to draw them. Sometimes we'll want to do a story that's just about characters. Like we're doing an episode where Pete and Micah essentially run into doppelgangers of themselves. Not not real doppelgangers, but a, a Secret Service a, a couple that they had worked with before. And they're they're. We just want to do a story where they see themselves in another two people. And the artifact. I don't even know what the artifact was. I'm trying to. Remember, we just shot it. I can't because sometimes it's it's the story that's interesting. It was an artifact that caused you to drown in salt water as you were standing there, and salt water started coming out of you. It's a really cool effect. We did some cool stuff. Robert Duncan McNeil came and directed it. He's a wonderful guy. Oh my God, I love Robbie. Were you inspired by any other TV finales? Like you saw, let's say, Lost, and said, I don't want to do that. Or um, no, no, not not really. I mean, we didn't want to do anything sad. We didn't want anybody to die. Okay. We didn't want, so we didn't. I didn't we don't kill anybody. Um, I think what we wanted to do is, we wanted to. I mean, honestly, I wanted something for the fans. I wanted to do something fun for the fans because it's their last show. More than, I mean, these actors will all work again, but Warehouse 13 will not exist for the fans again. And I wanted to do something that the fans would look at and go, "Oh my God, that was so great! I'm so glad that happened." Yes, I'm sad that it's over, but boy, do I feel like. I got what I needed from that. It seems like all the finales lately have been pulled from off. Half the fans hate it. You can't, love you can't do it. I mean, there will be a bunch of people who hate me for not putting Micah and HG together. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get I get attacked on Twitter all the time. I don't go on Twitter anymore because people are saying such nasty things to me. Oh, it's okay. I, I don't have time for Twitter anyway. I'm directing three out of the six. But they were they were very upset. They go, HG and Micah have to be together again. But that's not the show. It's not the show. That would be a great series. I think it was called Cagney and Lacey. But it would be a great, it would be a great fun series to do, and I would love to do that series, but that's not Warehouse 13, you know, that's, it's, no, it's, it's and Isles. yeah, exactly, it was only Isles, any, any version, but, and that's great, and I would do the HG Micah series, I wanted to do the HG series desperately, I thought that was, oh, I would love to do that show, uh, we, had, we had three great outlines for that, it might, you know, uh, yeah, because, because I might pitch it someplace else, no offense, sci-fi, but if you don't want it, I can take it elsewhere, nobody owns HG Micah. Can you tell us about what the, some of the biggest challenges were over the last five years? Saul. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wish he was here. Of Saul Rubinet. You know, um, producing a television show is always a challenge, right? It's always exhausting. I, I think the biggest challenge for me was 
I so am in love with this show that I wanted to be on set every minute. And so what was hard for me, and they actually had me, I had this big director's chair with a desk on it. So I could sit there and work and rewrite scripts and, and do notes and stuff and watch, it, and watch the monitor and then come up with run in pitch jokes and pitch story changes and, and give emotional beats and then go back and sit in the chair again. And I think the challenge was for me was just trying to do all that at once because I just love it so much. But most showrunners don't go to the set, uh, certainly not all the time. And, and I just live on the set because I love this cast so much and we're so, we have such good energy together, we come up with so much great stuff together that it was, it was important to me to be with them. Yeah. And what happened with some of your favorite episodes? Oh, I love them all, so I really do, I love every episode so much. Greatest Gift was a really, the Christmas episode that was a wonderful life take off, that was one of my faves because I loved seeing the family that didn't know they were a family become a family. You know, that was to me the show in a nutshell is see is that these people are such a family they can't not be a family. Even when they've gone off like this, they come back together and they still and they work together. And that was to me the, the crux of the show. Um, I loved um, I love the introduction of H.G. Wells. I love the introduction of, 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 of Steve. I love that episode when we introduce Car I love the introduction of Claudia. Whenever you introduce a new character, it's so much fun. I love meeting Pete's mom. I thought that was such a cool... That was my, one of my favorite moments of the show was when he turned and said, Mom! I mean, I just thought... And honestly, when they aired it, somebody hit the switch too soon. And literally, my husband turned to me and said, did, did, she, did he say Mom? Because it went off so fast. It was really Mom. And they went to commercial. And I thought, ah, ah. So ever, ever since then, we make sure we put a, a couple, a few frames of black right after the last moment so they don't go to commercial on my last moment. Because somebody, you know, just hitting a button while it's over. And, you know, no, geez, that was the most important moment. Yeah, so I love things like that. I love surprising, I love surprising people in a good way. In a, and in a scary way. I mean, Lena's death to me was incredibly moving to me. When, when, when Pete and Micah found her, I was, you know, when she turned to save, to save Artie, any moment that has to do with these people loving each other, to me, you know, is, is seeing Pete's incredible, being so incredibly torn about whether he should believe Paracelsus that he could save Micah. You know, that to me was, was the perfect example of who Pete is. He's, he's, he's an adult and he's a 10-year-old boy who's scared that his, his, the person he loves is going to die. So I'll do whatever I have to do. I just can't. I love the show. What are you saying? I said, what are you saying? <laughs> Uh, you can. I, I'm giving it all away. Go ahead. Yeah. Not all of it. I didn't say the specifics, but I did say I did say it was a clip show. Aaron was safeguarding everything. You know, he was Aaron always plays things close to the best. That's who the character is. We write to these actors. We write to who they are. Thank you. So much, Thank you. Thank you.